In the previous video, we looked at how to calculate protection levels using Littlewood's rule. Now we're ready to move on to some of the more complex models. But I want to just take a few moments to review uh, what we've done up until this point. Because as I've said, if you understand the intuition behind Littlewood's rule and the math, then uh, you really have a solid footing for understanding the more complex models uh, to follow. So let's just take a quick review here. So here's our uh, inequality. Uh, and if you remember back to our first video where we took a very simple example, uh, the RM analyst had one seat left to sell on the airplane. He had two fares to consider. There was a low fare at $100 and a higher fare at $200. And his job was to decide whether to take the low fare customer or save that seat for a higher fare customer. Well, he didn't know with certainty whether that higher fare customer would actually arrive. So we, we assigned some probability to that uh, expectation, calculated an expected value. And then the RM analyst could make a decision uh, based on whether to take the $100 or the expected value of waiting for the higher fare customer. If the expected value was of the higher fare customer was greater than $100, he would save the seat. If the expected value was less than $100, he would uh, take the $100 with certainty. The models that follow really don't get more complicated than that in terms of the intuition. The math does get more complicated, but if you understand the intuition, the math will be much easier to understand. And let's think about what, it, what went into this model. There's really two, two main areas of study in uh, revenue management in operations research, forecasting and optimization. So let's see where those two things came in here. Well, the forecast, we, to come up with this probability for the higher fare customer, there was some forecast of demand for that, um, for that, for that fare. And then based on that forecast, we derived the probability from a distribution assumption. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But we explicitly take into account the fact that there's variability around that forecast. That's where the probability comes in. If, we, if there was no variability and there was certainty around the forecast, then it would be really easy. And this is what revenue ma management analysts tend to fall into. Um, so an RM analyst tends to like to think about this as, I have a forecast of demand for my higher fare. Let's say the RM analyst uh, thinks he can get five seats for the higher fare. They tend to think, well, I'll, I'll protect five seats for that higher fare, and that is my protection level. But of course, that ignores the fact that there's variability and uncertainty in that forecast. So we don't use, the model doesn't use the forecast directly. We're actually forecasting the distribution and then using that distribution function to come up with a probability that will give us the expected value. So that's the forecast. We're going to talk a lot more about that. And then there's optimization. In this case, we simply chose theta to maximize revenue. That's how we, have, that's how we optimized uh, expected revenue. And by the way, we, we solved that uh, iteratively. I did that just to really um, hopefully make the example uh, clearer. Uh, there is actually a closed form solution for Littlewood's rule. We don't need to go through that now. Um, but that's one of the nice qualities about the rule is that it can be solved very quickly and implementation that's, uh, that's really key because you want to be able to um, uh, get things done in a certain time frame. So those are the two areas that we looked at. And uh, as I say, they, you know, there are uh, a lot of ways to do forecasting and optimization. We're gonna go through those, but they really don't, don't vary from these concepts. Forecasting is about um, coming up with a probability statement and optimization is about finding some control mechanism. In this case, it was a protection level. In other cases, it's something called a bid price or we're going to look at different control mechanisms. Um, but, but all revenue management models do those two things. You come up with some uh, forecast of, that you can use to create an expected value and then you optimize some control mechanism based on that forecast. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out here was uh, 
then when we calculated the expected value and when the RM analyst or when the control mechanism was making the decision between the lower fair customer or the higher fair customer, that decision was always being made on the margin, right? So when we calculated the expected value, it wasn't the expected value of selling uh, you know, four seats or five seats or six seats in the fair class. It was always the expected value of the next seat, of the marginal seat. And that concept uh, as well will be used in all of our models. And that's, that's a familiar economic concept, right? We economists like to say all decisions are made on the margin. They're not, based, they're not made based on what's happened up to that point. They're made based on what's going to happen at that point. So the decision here was whether we should accept the next customer at $100 or save that seat for the next customer um, with an expected value of, of something on the right hand side of this inequality. And we're going to see that again when we get to uh, the next model we're going to look at, which is EMSR. And we'll talk about this more in depth, but um, this is a very popular model uh, still used in uh, many systems today uh, throughout, throughout the airline industry. And EMSR stands for expected marginal seat revenue, expected marginal seat revenue. And uh, basically what it is, is if you look back at Littlewood's rule, you can see that there's an assumption here that there are two fare classes, a low fare class and a high fare class. Well, as we know, um, in every airline market, there are more than two fares. Um, in many cases, many more than two fares. Well, EMSR, so Peter Bellababa at MIT, took Littlewood's rule and generalized it to more than one fare class. And that's what uh, EMSR is. And it works with any number of fare classes. There are no, there's no assumption on the number of fare classes. And um, it uses this concept of expect, uh, um, maximizing expected marginal seat revenue, just like Littlewood's rule, it, rule did. So keep that in mind as we look at, at other models that we're always uh, maximizing revenue on the margin.